back to DIY Honeymooners. Today we are going to be replacing porch columns. Stay tuned and watch how. So we're going to start by setting up support posts here, or rather just tiny support walls around each post that we're going to remove. So when we remove it, the roof doesn't collapse on us and we can go and replace the old post with the new post with ease. So we have one, two, and three posts that we're going to do today. Let's get started. So the materials we're going to use for today are the three finished posts that are going to be put in. Uh, we're going to use two by sixes for the support walls that we're going to use when we remove the old posts. And as far as tools necessary, they're going to be here. Um, I have my circular saw with me, my oscillating tool, a couple different levels, framing square screws, all my drill bits, some blades, and an impact drill. All right, so the first post that we're going to replace is this one on the corner. So what I'm going to do is build a support wall over here as well as over here. Now that may be a little bit of overkill. I could probably just do one in one spot, but I'd rather be safe. So that's what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do to start with, with these support walls, I just need to get my exact height. So from the concrete pad up to where I hit my header. And this is about 96 and a half inches. So that's what I'm going to build my walls out of. All right, so let's go ahead and measure up, make our marks on two by sixes. We'll cut them, we'll start assembling those walls. Let's go. Okay, now as we're making our support walls here before we remove the first post, we have the studs in our walls. Now remember, we called for a total measurement of 96 and a half inches, but two by material is actually inch and a half thick. So we're gonna put one at the top, and one at the bottom to pretty much be our complete wall. So it'll kind of look like this. Now, this long stud is cut at 93 and a half inches. Add the extra inch and a half up top and bottom will get us our 96 and a half as a total. So let's go ahead and cut these, let's just say about 12 inches here because we don't need much. And then we'll go ahead and assemble our wall. Let's do it. All right, now that we have our support in place, or really built, we're gonna check and make sure it fits and make sure it's supporting what we need to. Now to be aware, because this is aluminum capping here, uh, there are actually different boards in here. One for support, one just for building out, which would not support anything. And that build out that does not support anything is the bigger one right here. So don't be fooled. It's the actual header beam that's in here. So we'll start in from out here. We're just going to temporarily try to fit it. And you want it to be a little snug like that. That way, you can get it in and we'll actually have tension. That will support the wall once we take the post out and if any sort of weight comes down, it'll transfer the weight right into the concrete. That's what you want. So now that we have the support structure in place here, we're going to go ahead and remove the first existing post. Now we may have to cut some parts and pieces out here, so if you do, get yourself a reciprocating saw. The blade has to be wood with nails embedded. It's going to be the best one to take apart here. Um, this one is so old, we may actually be able to just knock it right out, but we'll see. We have this just in case, so let's go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I'm going that way. Oh, it worked. There it is. I guess we 
You don't need this. So now we're going to cut the post to the height that we need with two brackets that are going to be in there. And actually this post is actually from end to end 96 and 3 16 which is what we need it to be. So all we're going to do is cut the post that's sticking out off flush on both ends and we'll use it as is. So let's do that. Okay, so what I'm doing here is now that I have my bracket in the bottom and I have this cut to length, um, because I'm replacing an existing, I'm gonna do what I call dry fitting. Um, even though there's nothing wet about this. Essentially, I'm just fitting it in place so I can get the correct location of my bracket up here. Um, the way I'm double checking it is two ways. One, the existing bracket that was there before, I'm gonna kind of use as a guide. Two, I have a post level. So I have a little level on each side so I can essentially Pop it on on each side, and I can tell if it's plumb, level, on multiple sides at the same time. I'll make my mark, put my bracket in, and then I'll go ahead and install the post. I'll know it's where it needs to be. So let's do that. Going to put this together this is the two-piece skirting that you can get from home depot you just snap in place there you go so now that the skirting is in place on the finished post uh, there's a little bit of gap between the skirting and the post and we're just going to go ahead and caulk here. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's a little trick when you're caulking. Um, to get the clean look that you're hoping for, you don't just want to caulk and then spread it with your finger. There are caulking tools you can use. In this case, because it's so small, I will use my finger, but I will spray it with a mixture of water and Dawn dish soap. Spraying it makes it uh, smooth. So that way when you're pulling it, it's not getting all clumpy on you, but rather it's a smooth line. So always use this.
now that the post is in place and all finished, we can go ahead and remove our support walls here and uh, see what happens. So let's do that. safe so far. Now, I can tell you for certain, weight did just transfer onto this because it moved everything down here. If you know, oh, just... yes it did. No big deal, it's what we wanted. We'll just go ahead and re-caulk um, the gap that it made right there, good as new. Now weight is transferring directly through this post into the concrete, so we know we're good.